Welcome to Sarania's travel vlogs from San Juan, Puerto Rico. This is the last trip of the year 2023 and here we are. Hope you stay with us and keep watching Sarania's travel vlog. Hope we can entice you with this beautiful video to come and explore the capital and the largest city of Puerto Rico which is San Juan and is home to 16th century landmarks which are massive fortresses to sweeping ocean views colonial buildings, Spanish colonial buildings, and way more. Time for some quick history. Puerto Rico originally belonged to the Taino people who inhabited the land till the Spanish came with Christopher Columbus and discovered Puerto Rico with Ponce de Leon who was also the first governor of Puerto Rico in 1493. The United States invaded the island during 1898 during the Spanish-American War as a part of a broader effort to push Spain out of the Caribbean and the Pacific and that's how Puerto Rico became a part of the United States. Our first stop in Old San Juan as we ventured into our day was Castillo San Felipe El Moro. El Moro is named in honor of the King Philip II of Spain and it's a huge fortification which was designed to guard the entrance to the San Juan Bay and defend the Spanish colonial port city of San Juan from any seaborne enemies. It has been the face of many a war that has been fought by the Spanish against the English, the Dutch and the Americans. The last war that was fought was actually with the Americans that saw Puerto Rico beginning to become a part of the United States and the end of the Spanish colonial rule in Puerto Rico. If you do like our travel videos and if you want to see more of them, please do not forget to like, share our videos and subscribe to our channel. El Moro has been designated to be a World Heritage Site by the United Nations in conjunction with also being a San Juan National Historical Site. So obviously we took advantage of looking and gazing at this beautiful fort. This is the main entrance to El Moro and as you enter, even if you are not a history buff, you are amazed by the beautiful fortress lying across the waters, the blue waters of the Caribbean and we can get inside, walk through all the six levels and steep ourselves in a lot of rich history that this fort has to offer. San Juan is bustling with vendors and as you step outside of El Moro, you find another person selling these fresh coconut pineapple flavored and many other fruit flavors really of ice cream or sorbet and we feast ourselves on one.
Walking steps away from El Moro is the old San Juan Cemetery which happened to be our second place to visit. The beautiful white tombstones against the blue waters of the Caribbean is a treat for the eyes. You can walk through the graveyard and see the tombstones of the most famous people buried here in Puerto Rico. Just a mile down the road, we go to our second fort of the day, yes, Castillo San Cristobal. San Cristobal was built as the largest fortification of the Spanish in the New World and stands upon 27 acres of land. Today it is a World Heritage Site declared by the United Nations and also a San Juan National Historical Site. San Cristobal's main goal was to prevent any land-borne attacks on the city of San Juan in Puerto Rico and obviously has been a part of many awards that have been fought. One interesting fact that we found out about San Cristobal is that there was a mutiny in San Cristobal when the cannons inside the fort were faced towards the city, directed towards the city because there was a mutiny against the Spanish colonial rule. And also, it's been home to the first female activist who wanted a free Puerto Rico who was held captive here before sending her to Cuba. So those are some fun facts about San Cristobal. Again, if you were not interested in forts and history, you could definitely love and admire the beautiful architecture and these huge wooden doors and take lots of photographs inside the fort. So it is definitely a must visit in old San Juan and we enjoyed watching every nook and cranny inside the fort for a long time and it does take a long time to walk through the fort and it's important to stay hydrated because this is winter we are in the middle of december almost at the end of december but it's pretty hot even now so do not forget to carry a bottle of water We always enjoy walking and taking walking tours of the places that we are in and we walk a lot and the same remains true for old San Juan so yeah as you walk on the streets across from El Moro and San Cristobal you're greeted with beautiful colorful buildings obviously a lot of palm trees and the blue waters of the ocean so take the time to gaze at the blue waters enjoy the sun and walk around in Old San Juan. Till I knew that La Perla, which is the neighborhood that we are looking at right now, which is just very close to Old San Juan, is a little shady, <laughs> I thought it must be so nice to walk down there and look at the ocean and see there's a rainbow so we caught a rainbow as well because it rains whenever in old san juan and if you're lucky like us you get to see a rainbow Always falling prey to the thirst trap of the old world charm, I have to talk about the cobblestone streets in old San Juan. So if you've been to San Juan or not, you'll see that the cobblestone streets here are slightly bluish in color. And that's because these were paved with distinct blue cobblestones, which were adoquines that were an ingenious waste or slag that resulted from iron smelting. The slag was cast into blocks and brought to the island as ballasts by the Spanish and then they went back with loads of gold and whatnot. 
but the stones have remained and are being constantly replaced with new ones. Something fun that I learned was that during the Cold War, the US sought to modernize Puerto Rico's economy because it wasn't so well and in order to push back the growth of communism in the island of Puerto Rico, the United States around 1950s started this operation called Operation Serenity which was to boost tourism on the island and that is how a lot of these houses got renovated, restored and painted and also new cobblestones were placed and paved every day. Something that I also thought about while walking on these streets was how would it be to live in one of these houses as a local? Wouldn't it become too much because of so many tourists like us visiting every day? Then let's use it respectfully. But anyway, the streets are beautiful. History looms large here. Every house looks beautiful. There's ample chances to take photographs. I just wanted to say that as you walk through the streets, the streets are started with really cute, quaint, small restaurants and cafes and you can halt at any one of these to grab a quick bite or to have some coffee. Also coffee in Puerto Rico is just famous. There are a lot of farm to cup coffee shops or cafes and you must appreciate the coffee in one of these cafes as you walk through the streets in Old San Juan. Our next stop was at this really fun place called Pigeon Park or Parque de Las Palomas. We decided to go here to feed the pigeons, but yeah, it was a lot. Anyway, this place started with a lot of pigeons coming and settling down here. And now it's a small park where you can go and feed pigeons and there's a small kiosk where you can buy pigeon feed and also enjoy beautiful views of the ocean if you get to stay safe from the pigeons. But whatever, this is a wonderful place to visit. Right next to Pigeon Park stands this small church which is called Santo Cristo the Salu and is known to have housed this folklore that's been going on for centuries. A nobleman was about to 
face um, a deadly accident while riding his horse and was almost about to fall into the ocean when he prayed to the Lord and the Lord saved him is what is said to have happened and so this church houses that story and stands in the face of this beautiful historical folklore to this day. Pretty hot day and lots of walking obviously so we need food and here we are at Barachina where we got our lunch. This is a beautiful restaurant in a very bustling old San Juan street. So you sometimes need to wait to get a table but we got it pretty quickly. Barachina happens to be the birthplace of the pina colada or that is what they say in Puerto Rico. So we obviously got a pina colada which was amazing. For food, we started with the Puerto Rican delights, which are essentially assorted starters um, or appetizers. It had turnovers, chicken croquettes, and some corn fritters. For the mains, I tried this amazing red snapper, and my husband tried mofongo, which is the Puerto Rican national dish. Now, mofongo deserves a special mention of its own. It is essentially smashed in fried plantains and stuffed with the meat of your choice. In his case, it was just veggies, so it can be stuffed with veggies as well. Um, on asking, he nodded a couple of times and said he liked it. Um, but I tried it later during the trip and found it to be pretty good. Right after lunch, we wanted to get some ice cream and we headed to Anita's Gelato. And yeah, it was amazing. It is also right next to Umbrella Street, which happens to be one of the most photographed streets in the country. And um, yeah, they have an amazing assortment of flavors to choose from. So it was awesome.
one cannot have been to old san juan without making it to the umbrella street umbrella street is the one of the prettiest streets in puerto rico and happens to be one of the most photographed too at this point in the year it's christmas so tada they have these amazing lights hanging there and we took a lot of pictures and waited patiently for the light show which was a surreal experience to watch It's never a bad idea to get lost and wander around the streets of old San Juan to collect some curios and souvenirs back to, for your friends and family and so that is exactly what we did and there were some amazing shops that had different kinds of paintings After a long day in old San Juan, it's now time to embrace the beauty of the night and to wrap up our day and get ready for the next day. But something to remember is that the streets of old San Juan is bustling and wonderful and takes on a different look and feel at night. So there is always reason to explore some more at night. At the end of the day, now it's time to check into our Airbnb. So we got this Airbnb in the neighborhood of Santors, which is really close to old San Juan. And this is a house and one of the apartments is actually the Airbnb and we got the ground floor so it was easy to park and get inside. I wouldn't say easy to park because it's first come first serve parking but on that particular day we did get parking. But it was one of those houses um, which look very Puerto Rican, a little bit of Spanish, um, you know, accents to the architecture but yeah let's go inside and explore it a little bit more so we get inside the hammock is the best part of the apartment i have to say not that I spent a lot of time, but it was just wonderful to have this cute little balcony with the hammocks and the lights, very dreamy. And yeah, I mean, Old San Juan is also notoriously famous for having a lot of cats, so they always lock the doors. But anyway, we are inside the room, so very cutely decorated, a small queen bed, there's a closet for the clothes and stuff, and then there's a small kitchen for us to cook because we had decided to cook for some of the days. And here's the washroom again 
aptly accessorized with everything that we might need for our short stay. So thanks to our hostess. After settling in into the Airbnb, we kind of uh, felt a little lazy but then made a next stop at the grocery store, the nearby supermarket where, you know, which was open for 24 hours luckily and we got a lot of groceries because we wanted to cook in for some of the nights. So it was, it was nice to explore the neighborhood a little bit and come back home. So here we are, I cooked dal, cauliflower, curry and some rice which is uh, not the basmati rice that we generally eat but the local variant and some roughly put together salad but it was wonderful to come back to our airbnb and kind of have our comfort food so that was day one in old san juan wonderful excellent very tiring day so we are going to be back again with another day in old san juan and way more from puerto rico so keep watching Saranya's travel vlogs and have a good night.